Nine times out of 10 when I go running, it is shoes on, out the door, same routes around my house that I do day in, day out. Perfect for training, but every now and then I like to grab some extra gear and get off road. Even better, go somewhere new, as I did this weekend with Nixon, and because the weather ended up being rubbish, I used most of the gear that I took with me. So I thought this would be a perfect time to just very simply whiz through the 10 must-have bits of kit that I always take with me when I go trail running. And stating the obvious, I am not an expert. I tented my pants. I've made myself a nice pants tent shelter. I'm not crossing the Amazon or running up and over mountains. I'm jogging around the English countryside in November. If you're looking for advice on bear repellent or how to find moisture after four days in the wilderness alone, this video is of no use to you whatsoever. But if you're the people that I saw out at the weekend who are asking me for directions because you had no idea where you were, wearing completely inappropriate clothing, no kit whatsoever, assuming you're still alive, this video might be for you. So the weekend was cool. It was a 24 kilometer run down near Winchester. It was actually supposed to be a race that me and Nixon had booked months ago, but it got canceled for coronavirus a couple of times. So when they rescheduled it again for this latest lockdown, I said, if you don't mind, just give me the GPX file. I'll go run it on my own. And we did. Shout out to Maverick Races for the route. We'll definitely go and do it again. So when we set off, we had the route. We knew it was nowhere particularly remote. It was 24k off road, so we figured about two and a bit hours, and we had the weather report. Not too cold, possible chance of showers. So for all that, this is what we took. Shoes. Obviously, what brand of shoe you run in is going to be particular to you. I wear ultras for just about everything that I run in or on or events I take part in. They just work for me, minimalist, big wide toe box, they just suit me perfect. But whatever your brand, there are some things to look for, some features in a trail shoe that are going to be different to a regular running road shoe. The first off-road run that I did was basically a muddy park run and immediately it was enough to make me understand that I needed a shoe designed for the conditions I was running in when those conditions were not going to be ideal. And the three main things I look for, grip, drainage, stability. I've got grip options of plenty, from mild right the way through to my mud claws that will basically just let me climb over anything. If you only want to commit to one pair of shoes for trail running, like a normal person, then just go somewhere in the middle because anything is going to be vastly better than a regular road shoe. Even Jenna, who is just a very casual runner, has one pair of shoes for the road, one for light trails, and then one for wet, muddy, grim conditions. Aside from the danger of running on wet, muddy, slippy surfaces in a road shoe, it is energy sapping. If you're going uphill in particular, you'll literally feel like you're taking a step back for every one forward. If you can't get decent grip underfoot, it will just sap your energy. And then drainage, your foot is going to get wet. Not at first, maybe, you might start off by skipping around puddles and avoiding muddy patches, and then you'll misjudge your foot in, you'll end up ankle deep in the ditch, and from that point on, you're just running in a straight line through whatever is in your way. You want water to drain out of your shoe. If it doesn't, you're gonna have uncomfortable, heavy lumps attached to the only thing powering you forward, your feet. I've even got some shoes that have such rubbish drainage that I had to cut holes in the bottom of them. These aren't them, but I could tell when I washed out some of my shoes, they would literally fill up with water until I put holes in the end of them. Don't be that person. Buy shoes with proper drainage in the first place. And then stability. That is really important off-road. The ground surface is uneven. You often can't even see it because of mud and leaves, water that you're treading on. You can't tell what's underneath your feet. Your feet are going to be rolling around underneath you and there is a high probability that you could actually roll over and do your ankle. One of the things I love about these Lone Peaks, the cushioning on these is pretty minimal underfoot. There's enough there to make it comfortable, but that's about it. It would actually be quite hard to roll an ankle in this thing. As a daft comparison, if I ran off-road in my Nike with its gigantic dinghy underneath the heel, I'd be going to hospital straight away. Lubricant, and staying with feet for a minute, start with your feet. Water and repetitive movement for hours on end means that what might be mild rubbing on a jog around the streets becomes foot crippling disaster running wet through the woods. I have two lubricant solutions. Before I set off, 
I apply an expensive fancy pants sports lubricant to any part of my foot that might rub. Tips of my toes mainly. Squirrel's nut butter, yes really, squirrel's nut butter is my favorite for that. But then when I'm out and about, I always take with me a little mini pot of Vaseline, just in case it means I can reapply when I'm out if I need to. In fact, forget trail running. If I'm going out for longer than an hour, I will always have a little pot of this in my back pocket, my running shorts, just in case. And once you've done your feet, do anywhere else that might need it. And there are two ways to discover where you might need it. You can Google running and chafing or go running, discover what chafed, and you will never make the same mistake again. And if you get back from a run and think, well, nothing did chafe, jump straight in a hot shower if something did. <coughs> As an example, that vest that I was wearing on Sunday, it's got a little zipper at the top, which is nice. You can undo it to let a bit of air in, but it rubs. So underneath that is a small blob of Vaseline, stops it hurting. The first time I wore it without doing that, four hour trail run, got home, jumped in the shower, screamed the house down. A sports watch of some sort. Running off-road, different surfaces, terrain, inclines and declines, it's really easy for the pace you're running at or trying to run at to end up all over the place. You also might not have the same sense of distance covered or time to go that you would have if you were running around on streets that you knew. Being able to check your pace, your time, your distance is really important as a minimum. I hesitate somewhat to recommend things that are stupidly expensive, but if you are gonna splash out on something, a top-end Garmin or something like it is game-changing for trail running. I downloaded on Sunday the GPX route straight onto the watch, so I followed that. Incredibly simple, I just follow the line. How hard is that? Very, very easy, didn't get lost once. The route was perfect on there, we knew where we were going. In addition to that, I've got pace, time, heart rate, and because it knows the route, it's also given me the distance still to go, the time of estimated completion, if any elevation is coming up so I can see if there's a climb ahead, and if I'm already on a climb, how much further to go. I mentioned this mini review actually in my run in Wales a few months ago, and as I said then, it is just like having a pit crew in your ear describing to you exactly where you are, how you're doing, even though you don't really know where you are at all. It is a luxury purchase, but there is definitely times where it's provided me with information that has been essential, or at least has felt essential when I've been wet and tired and can see there's just five more minutes left of the climb to go. Clothes, always wear some, naked is not ideal. Jacket, gloves, hat, in theory it's pretty obvious, get dressed appropriate to the conditions. But something to bear in mind is you're not just taking kit for the conditions you might be running in, you're also taking it for conditions you might be sat under a tree with a sprained ankle in, or lost and tired and trying to walk back to where you parked the car, wondering if the cramp is gonna return. And don't forget, weather changes fast. We set off on that run at the weekend, didn't look too bad, looked at the sky, thought maybe a bit of rain. Within two kilometers, we got caught on open ground, hailstorm, it was absolutely horrific. An hour later, the sun was out again, half hour after that, rain and wind. I would always pack a lightweight jacket. Mine is here, takes up almost no room in my backpack whatsoever, incredibly light, and a hat, I was running a hat anyway, and some gloves. In fact, I can run in some pretty cold temperatures as long as I've got my fingers covered up. And the clothes you run in, lightweight, not holding water, the same as you run in in the summer. If you're worried about warmth, take extra layers. Don't go running in some cozy cotton t-shirt because when that is wet, and covered in muck, you'll regret it. You'd rather you were running naked. What if stuff for emergencies? I have traveled in some pretty remote spots and I have hardly ever had to dip into my emergency pack. But on the odd occasion I have, it has been highly convenient. Clearly what you pack depends on where you're going. When I was motorcycling on my own through the Namibian desert, I had enough medical kit to give myself a lobotomy. On Sunday, I had, what did I have? And my little mini first aid kit with some plasters and a £10 note. That was it. Bottom line, if you think, oh, I should take it, but I probably won't need it, then take it. That race I mentioned in Wales a few weeks ago, they had a requirement that you had to take a space blanket with you for the cold. When we set off, I was annoyed. Where is it? I thought, I don't need this thing wearing me down with an extra 100 grams. It is a beautiful, sunny day. 
and then there was a point where we were up on top of a mountain, I say we, I was on my own, surrounded by fog, 20 foot visibility, really, really cold. It occurred to me if I had a problem up there and I had to sit down and wait for help, I'd be wrapped up in that thing like a turkey immediately. Telephone. Now this might be me, it might be a carry on from when I did my motorcycle travels. I don't like to be using my telephone as part of the event. It's in a waterproof bag, it's packed away in case I need a telephone. Or I have a problem with the map on my watch, I need to go to Google Maps or something. Basically, it's a safety net only. I'm not draining the battery, listening to music, I'm not relying on it as a fragile piece of tech as my navigation device, it's a safety net. I have one Powerbeat earpod so I can take a call or pick up a voicemail or make a call with Siri if I have to, but that is it. Other than that, I don't touch it, but I do have it. Food and water is a bit like clothing issues. Take what you need to do the run, but bear in mind, you might be taking longer than you think. You might have to stop, you might end up walking for some of it. If you're trail running on your own, there's no aid stations, there's no water table, I didn't go past any shops on Sunday. I had though enough food and water, some gels, a flapjack, to cope with pretty much anything I was likely to encounter on that day. And just like any long run, take what you're used to eating and drinking. Being in a field 10 miles from your car is not a good time to discover that Yorkies and a pack of pork scratchings doesn't facilitate calm digestion. Work that out in advance. I've actually done a video on why you probably don't need to be carrying as much water, if any water, on short and maybe medium runs normally. But trail running is different. For any given distance, it's tougher than running on the road. The potential for problems is greater. The availability of somewhere to get supplies will be reduced. So when I'm running on the road, I like to have just enough fuel, food, water, whatever that is, that I run out just before I finish. I like to get to a point where I think it's all gone. 2K to go, doesn't matter. That way I know that I finished without carrying any pointless additional surplus weight. When I trail run, the opposite. I am happy to finish with some stuff left over just in case. A vest, something to pack all this stuff in. There is no question that a running vest is the way to go. A decent one will hold your water close to you. Mine has space here for two bottles. I can get a reservoir in the back as well multiple places to stash all the stuff and keep everything evenly distributed around your body. No big lumps with all the gear in one place. It means you can throw a jacket over the top of the whole thing if you need to, if the weather gets bad quickly. I've got the Solomon ADV 5 and 12. This is the 12, slightly bigger, that I used on Sunday. They are very, very good. Are they better than a cheaper vest? Absolutely. Are they worth the extra? Maybe not, but it's not really a place to skimp on budget. A cheap vest is going to feel cheap. It is going to jiggle around. It will rub. It will be uncomfortable. Stuff might fall out. Stuff might not be stored securely. It will generally be a pain. A good vest like that is one that you won't even realize you're wearing. You'll be oblivious to it. That's exactly what you want. And if in any doubt, buy one with a bit more storage space than you think you'll need, especially a good one like the Solomon's. You can cinch down any spare material, make it all compact if you've got more space than necessary. That is far more preferable than having an overfilled vest. Trying to get stuff out of an overstuffed vest is a nightmare. When I was running at the weekend with that, I knew where everything was. Getting my hand into the pockets was fine because it wasn't overfilled. I knew that my gels were here, my cheese for the dog was here, my rain mac was in the back here. Everything is to hand. I don't have to stop running, I can keep moving, get what I need, and move forward. Plastic bags, not very exciting. I don't have one to show you, so I hope you know what they look like. The last thing I carry with me is a few sandwich bags. They weigh nothing, so it doesn't matter. You can put your litter in them. Don't drop litter on the trail, that's disgusting. You can put your car keys in them if it's gonna rain, your mobile phone. If you've been stuck in the wilderness for four days, you can use them to collect moisture. I don't think you can do that or they could probably suffocate a bear if they're big enough. They're not sexy, they're not cool, but when something happens that you discover a little plastic bag will help with, you will thank me. A mobile jet wash. Last thing I take, I don't actually take it running, obviously, be mad. It stays in the boot, when I get back, I plug it into a 12 volt socket in the car and I can clean anything. I never need to put a filthy dog 
in the boot again, or filthy trainers, or mountain bike, or child, basically anything you've got that you took with you that is now covered in crap, it doesn't need to get sparkly and shiny, but it will remove the vast majority of caked on mud, just makes traveling home far more pleasant. And when you get home, cleaning up is just far easier. Every time I go and do an obstacle course race, covered in mud, in the car park, I'm surrounded by people ask me where they can get one. And if you're wondering if I heat the water up so I can use it on the dog, no, because he's a dog. He jumps in every stream he can find. He doesn't need warm water and bubble bath. And I don't need pure commenting that he does. I hear that enough from my mother. And that is it. I love that sort of running from Sunday, just out and about. Not even entirely sure where I am half the time, but with enough kit with me that I can probably solve most problems should they occur far more fun and enjoyable, and a real change from just plodding up and down the road like I do most days. If you're thinking of trail running and there's some stuff in there that was useful for you, that is great. Like and subscribe, that is incredibly useful for me. And if you have any comments, if there's stuff that you take that you think I should, or you have any questions, stick it down below. Always useful to read and try and reply to everything that I can do. And check back for the next video, because there are some changes happening to the exercise bike, pain cave kind of area, uh, things that I would describe as an upgrade, things that Jen has described today as, what the hell have you been buying now?